Good morning, Year 8. It is Week 10 and we are doing a Skills Week. And our first lesson is Writing a Method and Risk Assessment. So big title today, Skills Week. Then the title for today's lesson is Writing a Method and Risk Assessment. By now, you should have got, or will get tomorrow probably, your... Um, skills pack and experiment pack through you don't need anything for today but keep it safe and um, we'll go through today's lesson and then you'll be using that at some point this week for the graph lesson with the graph paper so you are going to be planning an investigation at home to make salt crystals so the aim of the experiment is to make the biggest crystals as possible so if you're doing it at home obviously or in the lab we need to consider what are the risks um, we need to consider what um, equipment we're going to use and how we're actually going to do this and you're going to be writing a step-by-step -step method including some equipment you're going to use at home you can collect data, so it might be you're going to measure the size of the crystals, or it might be you're going to measure how big they are on um, different days to see how long it takes. But you must include safety considerations. So things to think about before you start. So quick recap, what is evaporation? So remember, we did this at the start of year eight in chemistry. Um, evaporation is when something is dissolved in something else. So you are going to be dissolving salt in water until it's absolutely saturated. So it cannot dissolve any more salt. And then you are going to evaporate it. So here, obviously, we have the equipment that we are going to use or we have used in school. Obviously, at home, you can't use a Bunsen burner. However, you have got heating equipment or it's very sunny at the moment. You may choose just to let the sunshine evaporate your liquid to leave the salt crystals behind. So evaporation is a separation of a dissolved solute, which is our salt, from the solution. So if you are going to obtain salt from seawater, you would heat the solution until the liquid has evaporated to leave the salt behind. So think about that and how you're going to do that at home. So here are some diagrams to help you. So you're going to get some kind of container, put some water in it. Not too much, obviously, because you've got to, you have got to evaporate this and you're not going to be able to evaporate a bucket load of water. So not too much water. You're going to add salt to that. How are you going to do that? Are you going to measure how much salt you add? Are you going to make a note of that? You're going to add salt to that and you are going to stir it until it dissolves. You are then going to heat it. So you might just heat it by leaving it on the windowsill. You might use a saucepan and evaporate some of the water, first of all, um, over the hob. Obviously, get an adult to help you. You may then just decide to pour it in a very flat dish, maybe a saucer or a plate or something like that, and leave it to dry. This is called crystallization, as you know. So again, think about what method you are going to use at home. Not what we do in school, but what you would do at home. So other things to think about, we need to think about the risk. So obviously, if you were in school, we would be telling you about all the risks. Be mind this, be careful of the gas, be careful of the Bunsen burner, don't touch this, don't break the glass. But you're at home, you're on your own. So you really need to think before you start your experiment, what is dangerous here? What is your risk assessment? Identify any hazards. Are you using glassware? Are you heating it in a saucepan? I don't know what you're going to do, but you need to think about hazards and risks. And if you are using um, the oven at home, you need to be asking your parents or your family or whoever you are living with in lockdown. Very important that you check what you are doing with an adult. 
Okay, so now comes the time to put all of this information together. So you are now going to write a detailed method of how to make the biggest salt crystals. Give it a title. You need to remember, what are you doing this for? What equipment have you used at home? Include a labelled diagram. Then I want you to write a step-by-step -step method of what you are going to do. Include the equipment, include how you're going to take data, if you're going to take data, measurements, and what are your safety considerations. We want a detailed method here. Now, tip of the day is, remember, the longer it takes to evaporate the water, the bigger your salt crystals are going to be. So have a think about that. So tomorrow's lesson, you will see me and Miss Moore actually doing this experiment in school. Um, and then you will be doing this experiment yourselves at home using the method you have made today. So off you go. Good luck. And we will see you tomorrow.